Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to go into milling machine vice work, tips and tricks. Just a short video. I'll just go over a couple of finer point tips and tricks that can be key to you doing accurate and reliable work. Often it's the tiny little details that make all the difference. Um, first off, you can set up your vice as a fixture with thin parallels to get the right height and you can instant glue on a little uh, gauge piece in the middle so that you can use that for your end stop and you can slide your part in to come up against that central end stop. You can put a spring between the parallels so that it stays firmly in place and here, here is where the people often overlook this situation. Don't grip your part off to one side only on one side of the vise because the whole jaw will rack around like that when you tighten it up and you'll only be gripping it on that inside edge it's not accurate and it's not secure you should always hold it do two at a time wherever possible you can set them central on that central gauge block which is instant glued onto the jaws you can remove it later easy enough tap it off and stone off the glue but in, while you're setting it up it's a very good way to balance the vise so that it's tightening and going in straight the jaw floats and holds both parts evenly and you don't get this jaw racking and uh, accuracy and, and safety and reliability issues from jaw racking for precision work it's better to have a small part on each side if you need to have it on one side or have it in the middle of the vise I've got one on each side because I need to drop the tool down and machine corners on the ends so I need it hanging out of the vise so it's important to have that balance. I'll put the camera on a stand now and show you a couple of little finer point tips and tricks that are really important to get accurate and reliable production. Okay so for precision setting your parts another reason for doing two at a time and uh, having either the program doing two at a time or using your uh, work offsets is that you're making 20, twice as many parts while it's running unattended. But okay, I want to go into these finer points. So there's three main tools you need here. A very fine file, a tissue, and a very fine feeler gauge. And this is a one and a half thou approximately or 0 0.04. And I'll, I'll try and go through it quickly and let you see what I mean. So I've got a precision pocket there. And one of the problems is that you get little bits of chips or swarf in there from the last part that you machined. And you can use compressed air, but compressed air is a bit brutal. And it blows it underneath parallels and into slideways, and it's not ideal. A tissue is like a magnet, and it will remove the uh, little particles of dust and chips very effectively. The next thing is you've cleaned the pocket out where it's going to go run a very fine file or yeah a fine file is better than a stone because you're putting little particles of abrasive particles on it if you use a stone and make sure that the parts that's sitting in your pocket are deburred. Now slide it in from the outside and up and down to ensure that there's no little burrs in there. And I can see a problem with this one. There's a little burr in there, but I won't go into it now. So you can just feel it catching on there because this is just about showing the principle of it. So now I'll do the other one, slide it in check up and down so that there's no little bits of chips in there then hold it down on the parallel and up against the stop and tighten up your vise. Now as a double check and this is where a very fine feeler gauge is very good it's a very thin feeler gauge and you can check it and you see that on an angle underneath the part that it's sitting down on the parallel and on an angle down vertically on the end stop here and here, like so, 
to check that it doesn't enter. If it doesn't enter, then you've got it within a thou and a half. And it's amazing how often this will find a fault. Honestly, almost 50% of the time, this gauge finds a tiny little bit of uh, chip or dust under the part which is holding it up or holding it out lengthways and I know I have to remove, clean further, deburr until I get this feeler gauge not able to go in and then your part is seated, you can tighten it up fully. It takes a few seconds to do that each time and if you're doing precision parts you won't get the rejects by using that method. These uh, Hallmark lathe tool setter anvils are made out of tool steel and they're later hardened and ground and that tool steel is pretty tough on cutters and you've got to run it pretty conservatively or you'll quickly wear the tooling out. This is uh, only running at 2400 rpm for a uh, six millimeter cutter. Having individual feeler gauges is very useful and uh, you want them to be very thin and that's not always easy to get. The thinnest one here is 0.04 that's just over a thou and a half and that's really useful for checking that your part is in its fixture or vice nest correctly. A good source of this material if you're having trouble getting it is to buy some cheap feeler gauge sets for example on AliExpress or eBay they're only four, four or five dollars and they're actually quite good quality gauge stock good spring steel ground accurately to size and you can cut out these little gauges with a pair of sharp scissors or snips and have some very useful uh, shim stock from these sets. If you're wondering how you can source material for stops in your vise Key steel is a good option. You can buy links of it in all different sections, really reasonably, commonly available. Hacksaw it off to the length you want and just finish machine it on the end to get it nice and square. So if you think about how the jaw is clamping on your part, you don't need to do it up excessively tight. You're only going to buckle the vise, strain the screw and damage the part. I see people hammering their handle. You don't need to do that. If it's an accurate vise and it's closing in in a balanced way with two parts or one part in the middle, you only need to do it up gently. Just with one hand, with just a little bit of torque and you're never going to shift it. I've been using this method for many years. You probably know that the Kurt design jaw and many copies of the Kurt has a pull down mechanism inside that pulls the jaw down and there's your adjustment screw there. It's really important to keep that adjusted to make sure the jaw doesn't lift up and get chips between the jaw and the body of the vise. Um, do your housework on that and look after your vise and uh, keep this firm and keep the jaw down firm and when you tighten up tighten it up the jaw won't ride up and you won't need to hit the part down with a, a mallet and you won't need to force the jaws just do it up neatly by hand and if everything is clean and in place you won't get any issues. I use the same procedure on this bigger mill and even with a big face mill machining steel I don't need to mallet the part down or mallet the vise tight it's just having everything in line and accurate and neatly nipped up. I've never had a part come loose. Of course, for doing precision work and using a vise for light clamping, you must really think about the engagement and the balance. You must really think about how the vise works. You must have the slideways of the vise clean and the surfaces clean. You must get good engagement. You must have the part in the middle or balanced on each side in order to capitalize on the potential of a precision vise and do light clamping and have security and safety and accuracy. I've gone into vise jaw racking in other videos so, but I'll just throw it in again here in case you've missed it. So quite often you want your part to be hanging out the edge of a vise so that you can drop the cutter down the side or whatever. 
But the problem with that is that your screw is pushing here in the middle and the whole jaw racks around and you're only gripping on a little edge very insecure. I'll bring this jaw into contact and you can have a look at a dial indicator here. So I've come into contact there, we're now in contact. Now you watch how much the vice jaw racks when I tighten it up. So you're only getting you're getting a gap down this end and you're only getting grip on that corner. You're also probably crushing your part because it's very localized pressure. This is not a secure way to hold your part. You should have another part in this side and if you only have one part put in some sort of a spacer or adjustable spacer so that the vice jaw goes in straight. Or clamp your part in the middle of the vice so that the forces are balanced and use spacer blocks to give you the clearance around your cutter. So one parallel may be held in place underneath your super glued on stop strip against the fixed jaw of the vise. The other parallel may be held in place with a spring to keep the pressure there and hold it in place. So you can have a series of springs that's worth collecting them that are suitable for small, medium and larger work and that keeps the parallels in place under your work. You don't want your parallel shifting for several reasons. They can get chips underneath them and you may be drilling or machining through the part and you don't want to strike that hard and parallel and it holds the part more securely and accurately if they stay in the correct position. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm trying to do a video like this every couple of weeks, so keep your eye on the channel. Cheers.